Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we are looking at UFO, the game of Close Encounters. Now this is a uh, a Leisure Time Games uh, imprint. It's the Avalon Hill Game Company. Uh, Avalon Hill did a lot of really cool war games back in the day. Um, and this one I uh, played a long time ago, but I haven't played it in a while. And I remember liking it. But you get a player playing board die cut playing pieces, two dice, and complete instructions. And it's basically a game of alien invasion. Sort of like Missile Command, but on a board game. So let's see what we got here. Like a lot of these games, uh, you had two boards that would co connect to make one. So here's half of it. Oh, it's upside down. It says UFO at the bottom, so you know what game it's from. And there's your outer sectors. And then the other half of the board would be on the other half. So instead of creating a four board, it basically just replicated the same sticker and let you flip it up. So this is copyright 1978, I think. Yeah, 78. So that's what the board looks like. It's really not big. It's uh, a lot of these games, since four corner boards, uh, the folding boards like that would usually not last very long. They, they tried this as like a different experiment where it's two pieces. But that often meant that half of it would get destroyed or broken or missing. And uh, you'd be left with a half board. So instead of it splitting along the middle seam, um, you just break half of it. So same problem, different. You know, it's a distinction without a difference, as the lawyers say. So, yeah, overall, pretty uh, interesting star pattern. You know, for the 70s, space stuff was cool. And I like star fields, so it's kind of cool to see the Earth in the middle there. And uh, But, yeah, uh, let's look at the components. Uh, but these are nicely made boards. Uh, as long as they were taken care of, it was usually a really strong centerpiece here. Um, good design and nice quality thick board so I really appreciate that Avalon Hill did make really good stuff like I said so alright so I'm missing a die here but here's a d6 and there's some piece holders alright and there's a little mailer so you could do a friend a favor and put them on a mailing list so that they could be endlessly harassed Oops, knocked a piece out. Um, this one's missing one piece down here. It's uh, one of the yellow pieces, which is a space rocket. So there's the moon, and that moved around the board, as I recall. Then you had uh, space stations, the space patrol rockets. Um, there's another space station. I think what I'm missing is actually a, a rocket, but it might be a station. Then you've got your UFOs, flying saucers are labeled, because uh, it was the 70s. Um, communication satellite, a jet, a mirage, uh, radar bogey, weather satellite, uh, weather balloon, um, navigational satellite, and boy does that look old school. Then you've got a planet, uh, which looks like Saturn, an exploding meteor, a fireball, evening star and a comet and what you do is uh, these would be flipped over if I could stop knocking that flying saucer out and you wouldn't know what they were until you figured it out and then you had to send your guys over because if you didn't know which of the, those things they were it could be you're looking at the planet I'm surprised they didn't have swamp gas listed so there's different ways to play the game there's the regular version the basic game and then on the back they have the advanced game. So there were actually multiple ways you could play the game, which is nice. So some people want to play the simple version, especially younger people. But older kids and some of the more diehards like myself would play the advanced games. Uh, the basic game is pretty simple and straightforward. It's pretty easy. But you have to make sure you have everything. If you want something much more complex, they recommend Starship Troopers. Which was a really good game, as I recall. I played that several times when I was a teenager. And I remember liking that one. But it's designed, and I'm quoting here, the basic game is designed to start you playing after just five minutes of studying the rules. 
The advanced version adds more flavor, sophistication, complexity, and length to the game for those desiring a more challenging conquest. Players are urged to play the basic game several times before reading the advanced rules. Although a simulation UFO is admittedly simple and abstract with the emphasis on playability and ease of comprehension, those interested in greater sophistication and complexity should try Starship Troopers. So, yeah. So there's not a lot of pieces to this, and, you know, um, it doesn't need a lot of pieces. And, honestly, you can work without one or replace it pretty easily, I think. And uh, these were just to hold the pieces of the board together. You put one at each end and clip it in the middle so that the board won't fall apart and scatter around. And like I said, I was missing a D6, but that's not too bad. There's there's not a lot to this game, but it, it it's not meant to be a complicated game. And what's the age range on here? I don't think it says. Yeah, it just says this bookshelf game. Doesn't have an age range. I don't think it'd be hard for the average 10 to 12 year old to learn how to play this. Um, but it is a, an older game, so a lot of kids nowadays and even people in their 20s and 30s don't like the Avalon Hill type war games. E even though there's different levels of complexity here, um, a lot of people aren't going to like it just because it's old style. I like these vintage games. Uh, I remember liking this one quite a bit. This is um, not my original copy, unfortunately. That one got um, borrowed and never returned. So... Um, yeah, this was my backup copy, and you can tell that the boxes get crushed in real easily. So you'll want to check that, and you'll want to check the corners for splitting, like usual. Uh, these are meant to be stored on a bookshelf, like a hardcover book. Most people just laid them flat and stacked them up. But other than that, that is UFO, the game of Close Encounters. There's not a lot to it, but it's a fun little game of uh, detecting alien invaders and shooting them down. But that's what's inside. I like this game. I think it was fun, especially for the late 70s. I've definitely played way worse games out of that era. But, uh, yeah, check it out if you get a chance. It's an Avalon Hill. If you like Avalon Hill stuff, you'll definitely want to check it out. But that'll do it for me. As always, thank you for watching and supporting the channel. We hope to see you on the next episode of What's Inside.